Because of the uh, COVID-19 social distancing recommendations, our meeting tonight is being held via Zoom. Council members, city staff, and myself are joining remotely, while the city administrator, Laura Smith, and the city clerk, Audrey McClanahan, are at their own workspaces at City Hall. The public is invited to participate by using the instructions included in the city council calendar item listed on the front of the missionks.org page. Public participants will be allowed to make comments through the online chat feature. Please note that the comments are visible to the entire group. If you wish to make a public comment, please state your name and city of residence for the record. And also be, please be conscientious of others trying to speak and speak slowly and clearly. If I need to confirm something that may have been difficult to hear, I will ask for a clarification. We will begin our meeting this evening with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, stands one nation, nation under God, under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. All right, that's always kind of awkward, but I think it's important. So, Audrey, will you please call roll? Yes, thank you. Schlossmacher. Here. Thomas? Here. Bolting House? Here. Davis? Here. Rothrock? Here. Inman? Here. Crane? Here. And Flora? Here. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, we do have a revised agenda this evening uh, with one item added under new business. I would entertain a motion to approve our revised agenda as presented. Mayor, I move that um, the City Council adopt the revised agenda as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Audrey, please call for the vote. Okay. Flora? Aye. Bolting House? Aye. Inman? Aye. Crane? Aye. Davis? Aye. Sloshmacher? Aye. Thomas? Aye. Rothrock? Aye. Thank you, motion carried. All right, moving on to item one, public hearings. We do not have any public hearings tonight. So we'll move on to item two, special presentations. And although we are meeting virtually this evening, we do have four proclamations that I would like to share. Our first proclamation is Building Safety Month. Um, it recognizes May as Building Safety Month. And I want to say thank you to our staff and consultants who work to ensure that our homes, buildings, and infrastructure are structurally sound and safe for all who use them. Also, thank you to our neighborhood services and community development staff who work to keep our neighborhoods well maintained, provide assistance to those in need, and administer the various programs we have that work to bring our neighbors, neighborhoods together. All right, our second proclamation is National Police Week Proclamation. It recognizes May 10th and 16th as National Police Week in Mission. And even though the official uh, observance has passed, we would like to recognize the selfless service of Overland Park Police Officer Mike Mosher, who lost his life in the line of duty recently, protecting and serving his community. So if you would please join me now in a moment of silence to pay tribute to this brave and courageous officer. Uh, thank you. I'm also honored to recognize the service and commitment of our Mission Police Department, 
So thanks to all of our officers who are so important to our city. They're keeping us safe, they're working with our students, and they're helping our business community. Our third proclamation is National Public, the Public Works Week. It recognizes the important work that Public Works does in our community. Um, and we're designating the, it's the, May, the week of May 17th through the 23rd as Public Works Week in mission to coincide with the national observance. We, are, we, we rely on them to maintain our infrastructure and they are second to none when it comes to clearing our roads of snow, preserving our parks and landscapes, maintaining streets and curbs, as well as keeping our city well lit and managing redevelopment projects. So thank you to Public Works. And our final proclamation this evening is our, uh, recognizes May 16th as Parks to Kids Day. Parks to Kids Day empowers families to embrace what they can do outdoors at America's parks, our public lands and waters, while encouraging kids to lead a more active lifestyle. This is a great opportunity to practice social distancing while enjoying outdoor activities, as well as for us to promote the value and the amenities of all our parks and mission. Thank you to our parks and recreation staff. They work hard throughout the year to promote the benefits and rewards of an, actual, of an active lifestyle. Move it, that completes item number two in our agenda. Moving on to item number three, issuance of notes and bonds. We do not have the issuance of any notes and bonds this evening, so we'll move on to item four, consent agenda. Our consent agenda has eight items on it tonight. Our council committees met on May 6th, and we fully discussed each of these items, and the committee agreed that the items listed on our consent agenda are routine enough to be considered under a single motion a few other items considered by the committees will be presented under committee reports later on in our agenda tonight. If a council member or a member of the public would like an item removed from the consent agenda, they may, may request that at this time. Is there anybody who would like an item removed from the consent agenda? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion to approve. Mayor, I move the city council approve the minutes of the April 15, 2020 City Council meeting and minutes of the May 13th, 2020 Special City Council meeting. I think, I think Council Member Crane, I think you want to make the motion for the entire consent agenda. That's correct. Do you want me, do you want me to restate it? Uh, if somebody would like to, yes. I mean, I think it, it's uh, consent okay. agenda. Mayor, I move that the City Council adopt the consent agenda as printed items 4A through 4H. Second. Sorry. All right. That's okay. <laughs> All right. We have a motion in a, uh, in a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Audrey, please call for the vote. Amen. Aye. Flora. Aye. Davis. Aye. Thomas. Aye. Crane. Aye. Colteen House. Aye. Rothrock. Aye. Sloshmacher. Aye. Thank you. Motion right. carried. Um, let's move on to item five, public comments. If any members of the public participating via Zoom would like to make a public comment on items that are not included in the agenda, now would be the time. If you would please submit your comments or questions using the chat feature, and remember that your questions are visible to all participating in the Zoom meeting. All right, moving on to item six, action items, planning commission. We do not have any items from our planning commission this evening. So we'll move on to item seven, committee reports. Council Member Flora, would you please provide a report on our Finance and Administration Committee? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The Finance and Administration Committee met on May 6th and considered five items, including acceptance of the meeting minutes, a resolution approving the third amendment to third amended and restated redevelopment agreement for the Mission Gateway Project was approved on the consent agenda. There are two additional items for consideration on tonight's regular agenda. Our first item is approval of the 2019 audit. 
The audit for the 2019 fiscal year was conducted by Burbridge Trahan and Company, PA, Certified Public Accountants. The auditors worked in conjunction with city staff to pre prepare and audit the comprehensive financial statements of the city of Mission for the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2019. The audit includes examining on a test basis evidence supporting the amounts and disclosures in the financial statements, assessing the accounting principles used in significant estimates made by management, as well as an evaluation of the overall basic financial statement presentation. The city received a clean or unqualified unqualified audit for the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2019. The Government Finance Officers Association of the United States and Canada, or GFOA, awarded a Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting to the city for its 2018 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, or CAFR. This was the 25th consecutive year the city received this award, which is earned by publishing an easily readable and efficiently organized CAFR. The report must also satisfy both generally accepted accounting principles and applicable legal requirements. Mayor, I move the City Council accept the audited financial statements for the year ending December 31st, 2019. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Mayor, if, if I might just yes. add here, um, I would like to extend a special thanks to our Assistant City Administrator Finance Director Brian Scott and his staff, Debbie Long. Uh, and Joanna Marin for all of their hard work in pulling the information together for the auditors and, and all their work throughout the year really to help make sure that um, we can continue to present the CAFR uh, in a way that is um, recognized by our, our auditors and, and others. Um, I also think that it just from a public standpoint, not only did we receive the clean or unqualified audit, but I think that as the public has the opportunity to look at um, particularly our ending fund balances in the general fund, uh, I think our financial position uh, is incredibly strong at this point, um, which is something we've talked about on occasion, but uh, certainly documented in the CAFR for 2019 and will allow us to really move, I think, thoughtfully and uh, cautiously through our you know, 2021 budget discussions that will be starting next week. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? I just wanted to add uh, my thanks uh, on behalf of the council for all the work that uh, your staff has done. It's really wonderful work and obviously the results uh, state, uh, demonstrate uh, all the work that's been done. We really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, any other discussion item? All right, hearing none, Audrey, please call for the vote. Flora. Hi. Inman. Aye. Crane. Aye. Fulting House. Aye. Rothrock. Aye. Sloshmacher. Aye. Davis. Aye. And Thomas. Aye. Thank you. Motion carried. Mayor, we do have one additional item from our Finance and Administration Committee tonight. That's a resolution of, for general obligation refunding bonds series 2020A. Colors Inc.'s annual review of the city's outstanding debt identified Series 2010B general obligation GO bonds as a candidate for refunding. The city of Mission issued 6,945,000 GO refunding bonds in 2010 for the purpose of restructuring bonds that were previously issued in 2005 and 2009 to fund flood mitigation efforts and stormwater infrastructure improvements. The interest rates on the bonds vary between 4% and 4.25%. The Series 2010B bonds have a prepayment option that can be exercised by the city in September of 2020, whereby the city can refinance $6,250,000 of the principal. The municipal bond market has been in a very favorable environment for the past year, and it would be advantageous for the city to exercise the prepayment option on its Series 2010B bonds by issuing Series 2020A 
GO refunding bonds in the amount of $6,395,000 with the same maturity date of 2029. Ehlers Inc. estimates that the new issue would have a true interest cost of approximately 1.52%, reducing the city's net interest costs over the remaining nine-year life of the bonds by approximately $603,000. The actual sale of the bonds would be approved by the council at the June 17, 2020 regular meeting with closing anticipated on July 9th. Mayor, I move the city council adopt the proposed resolution authorizing staff to proceed with preparing and offering for sale of general obligation refunding bonds in the amount of $6,395,000 Series 2020A. Second. 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 So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Audrey, please call for the vote. Davis. Aye. Balting House. Aye. Rothrock. Aye. Inman. Aye. Flora. Aye. Kring. Aye. Thomas. Aye. Toshmucker. Aye. Motion carried. All right. Um, and Mr. Mayor, that concludes our report from the Finance and Administration Committee. All right, thank you. And now we'll move on to Council Member Thomas to provide a report on our Community Development Committee. Our Community Development Committee also met on May 6th and considered seven items. These included acceptance of the committee minutes, 56 and Fox Ridge asphalt repairs, 51st and Lamar stormwater repairs, community center indoor pool deck repair and resurfacing, and exterior wood surfacing and maintenance, and nuisance abatement services contract award, which were all approved on the consent agenda. There's one additional item for council's consideration tonight on our regular agenda. Item 7C, Rock Creek Channel Improvement Project contract award. The Rock Creek Channel Improvement Project includes construction of retaining walls, channel modifications, and parking lot improvements along Rock Creek from east of Knoll Avenue to Roland Drive to address erosion and flooding concerns. The city received a bid from Gunter Construction in the amount of $4,519,514. The project was over budget by $138,652, primarily because of costs associated with grading and construction of the retaining walls. Based on an evaluation of current revenues and expenses in the stormwater utility fund, there are sufficient funds to move the project forward, even with the increased cost, and staff is recommending that the project proceed. If the contract is approved, the construction would begin in late May and be substantially complete by end of 2020 with final restoration of the project, seeding and sodding, planting trees, etc., in spring 2021. The city's land use attorney continues to work on acquiring easements from one property and, and has filed eminent domain petition with Johnson County Courts. However, this process has been delayed due to closure of courts as a result of COVID-19. Staff has discussed this situation with Gunter Construction and they believe they can still complete the project in the proposed timeframe. Mayor, I move the City Council approve a contract with Gunter Construction for the Rock Creek Channel, Nall Avenue to Roland Drive Improvements Project in an amount not to exceed $4,519,514. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes, Sally. Yes, I just wanted to thank staff for all their hard work on keeping this moving, um, even in these difficult times. I know the folks that live around this project are gonna be very grateful to see it going and completed. I also believe that there's going to be a meeting of the Roland Park Court uh, group. Is that correct? Not Roland Park. We actually, we actually had our first virtual neighborhood project meeting last night at 5.30. Um, oh, that I think night. was very, right. very successful, yes. Uh, we had about... Uh, the, the contractor, or so the project designer, the contractor, and the construction inspector were all on the call. Um, and I think we had all total staff and resident participants. I think we were between 25 and 26 uh, throughout the course. So we had the opportunity to take 
walk through the plans and then to take questions. And uh, this was our first foray into the virtual public neighborhood meeting, uh, which was a little <laughs> bit different. I know we've done some ward meetings uh, virtually, um, but I think that was a success and I, I think everyone's anxious. I know they've been out doing some construction staking already, so should see, start to see some activity very soon. Friend. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is a question either for Laura or Mr. Martin. Uh, I was just curious if we had any further updates with the Wendy's and if they had, if we've been able to make more contact with them. Uh, we have been in contact with Wendy's, um, if not every day, about every other day for the last two weeks. Um, we are still struggling to um, get them to communicate uh, in a timely manner with us. Although I think we did make some progress today, according to Mr. Heaven, in looking at some alternatives. I think, as I understand it, some of the concern is, was an underground easement um, across the property. So we're reevaluating whether or not we can sort of uh, change, change that up and, and still accomplish what we need um, to do without some of the concerns potentially of the property owner of us coming in and maybe impacting their parking area. Um, so we continue to negotiate with them. Um, again, we just, I, we checked in, we just had that update from Mr. Heaven this afternoon. Uh, as well, we are continuing and now that the courts, um, although the courts had kind of shut down it right after we filed the eminent domain petition, uh, they are sort of starting to to gear back up with some virtual activity and I know we have reached out and asked to get it on a docket um, as soon as possible. So we, we are trying to move that forward and I am hopeful that perhaps we're getting closer to some resolution. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, Audrey, please call for the vote. Davis. Aye. Sloshmacher. Aye. Rothrock. Aye. Balting House. Aye. Flora. Aye. Thomas. Aye. Inman. Aye. Crane. Aye. Motion carried. All right. Mayor, that concludes. That concludes. Oh. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Council Member Thomas. Um, that will move finishing, and that's our finishing item seven, moving on to item eight, unfinished business. We do not have any unfinished business this evening. So we're moving on to item nine, new business. And we do have two new business items tonight. The first is the election of chairs and vice chair for the Community Development Committee. Ms. And then also the Finance and Administration Committee. Ms. Smith, would you please provide us information on this item, please? Um, yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, each year, uh, according to our um, city code in advance of the June meeting, the council will select uh, committee chairs and vice chairs. And so that is uh, where we are this evening. We included it as a discussion item on the May 6 committee meetings, just to remind um, everyone that, that it was upcoming at this meeting. So um, just part of a, an annual process that we go through to look to appoint that leadership for our two council committees. And do we just take nominations? Is that the process? Yes. All right, so I would open the floor for nominations for first, the Community Development Committee. Or anybody wants to nominate someone? Hillary. Mayor, I nominate Sally Flora for the position of Community Development Committee Chairperson with a term expiring May 19th, 2021. Second. Are there any other nominations for this position? Hearing none then we would vote on this item. All right, Audrey, would you please call a vote roll? Crane? Aye. Thomas? Aye. Sloshmacher? Aye. Flora? Aye. Fulting House? 
Aye. Davis. Aye. Rothrock. Aye. Inman. Aye. Thank you, motion carry. All right, then we will open up nominations for vice chair of community development committee. Mayor. Ken. This is Ken Davis. Yes, uh, Mayor, I nominate Trent Boltinghouse for the position of community development committee vice chairperson with a term expiring May 19th, 2021. Second. Second. Are there any other nominations for vice chair of community development committee? Hearing none, Audrey, please call for the vote. Flora. Aye. Holting how, oh, sorry, Thomas. Aye. Rothrock. Aye. Inman. Aye. Crane. Aye. Davis. Aye. Sloshmacher. Aye. Uh, Bolting House. Aye. Motion carried. All right, then now we'll open up nominations for Finance and Administration Chair. Mr. Mayor. Ken? Yes, uh, Mayor, I nominate Debbie Cream for the position of Finance and Administration Committee Chairperson with a term expiring May 19th, 2021. Second. All right. Any other nominations? Hearing none, Audrey, please call for the vote. Thomas. Aye. Rothrock. Aye. Flora. Aye. Davis. Aye. Inman. Aye. Crane. Aye. Foshmacher. Aye. Bolting House. Aye. Motion carried. All right, then let's open up nominations for Vice Chair of Finance and Administration. Solly. Mayor, I nominate Hillary Thomas for the position of Finance and Administration Committee Vice Chairperson with a term expiring May 19th, 2021. Second. Second. All right. Are there any other nominations for Vice Chair of Finance and Administration? Hearing none, Audrey, please call for the vote. Slash Mucker. Aye. Faulting House. Aye. Rothrock. Aye. Thomas. Aye. Crane. Aye. Inman. Aye. Davis. Aye. Flora. Aye. Motion carried. All right. Well, congratulations, everybody. Um, the second um, item under new business is a resolution for extending the due date for the annual business license uh, renewal the fees. Ms. Smith, will you please give us some information on this item? Yes, thank you, Mayor. And my apologies, I wish that um, I'd had my act together and gotten this on our committee agenda earlier this month. But um, with all the transitions that we've had, um, as Audrey and I were working on business license renewals, uh, which according to our current city code, uh, run from July 1st um, of each year through June 30th of the following year. Um, we, we've been talking about changes to the business licensing application form to um, collect new and different information that uh, would have been handy in this COVID-19 environment. So we've made some changes there. Uh, also, uh, lots of um, kudos to Audrey because she has created an online fillable form um, that we're going to really promote with our businesses as well as um, kind of promoting online payment so that we can try to minimize um, the in-person interaction that we have through the business licensing process as well as just I think streamlining it and making it more efficient for 
our residents. But as we have been working on all of those things and, and preparing to get the renewal letters out, um, we realize that with the timing of all of this and uh, as we're coming out of or into the various recovery phases that um, adding the requirement to pay an annual business license uh, may be something that could cause some stress for some of our businesses at this time. And so um, we looked at um, how we might consider extending that due date past July 1st and giving folks a couple of extra months um, without the threat of the penalty, which is also included in our municipal code um, until September 1st. So pushing that date from July 1st to September 1st, really in response to everything that, that we've been dealing with uh, related to COVID-19. It is a, a revenue stream for the city that generates about $100,000 a year. So it is uh, important to us overall in the grand scheme of, of that, but we wanted to be able to offer this support and this opportunity um, for our businesses at this time. All right, I would entertain a motion. Mayor. Mayor, I move that the city council uh, approve a resolution extending the due date for the annual business license fees from July 1st, 2020 to September 1st, 2020 and waiving any penalty or late fee until after September 1, 2020 in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Second. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second discussion on this item. I appreciate the staff looking out for our local businesses. I think that's a great, a great move. Yeah. Thank you. All right, hearing nothing further, Audrey, please call for the vote. Inman. Aye. Flora. Aye. Davis. Aye. Thomas. Aye. Crane. Aye. Halting House. Aye. Rothrock. Aye. Slash Mocker. Aye. Thank you. Motion carried. All right. That concludes item nine. Moving on to item 10. Comments from city council. This is an opportunity for comments from our council members. Does anyone have anything that they'd like to share? Mayor? Ken? Yes, I just wanted to say thank you to staff for helping uh, during this period of, with the uh, Lamar UBass project. Uh, we've gotten a lot of calls with regards to some of the issues and I really appreciate the responsiveness of staff in responding to some individuals that were concerned about some of the construction in front of their homes. So I just wanted to extend my thanks to Celia and Brent for their work and, and to Laura Smith for helping respond to these uh, individuals. Thank you. All right, anybody else? Seeing none or hearing none, we'll move on from item 10 to item 11, Mayor's Report. I just wanted to add my congratulations to staff on the uh, clean audit opinion. Um, having been in charge of audits in my previous life, um, it takes daily due diligence. This is, even though this is a once a year report, you got to do things right every day um, to get that clean report at the end of the year. And it sometimes gets taken for granted um, to get that clean opinion but I do um, value very much the work that goes into it. So thank you very much. Um, let's go to item 12, city administrator report. Ms. Smith, do you have a report? I do have a couple of items, Mayor, thank you. Um, I would just like to reiterate, I know we had a lot of proclamations um, this evening and it feels strange to do them virtually where typically this would be a, a great opportunity and one of our favorite nights to have a lot of our staff present in the council chambers with us to be able to recognize their dedication and service and to thank them personally. But um, I appreciate us taking the time to still recognize those things virtually. And I can tell you that um, we could not have done what we've done throughout this, this whole situation 
um, without the staff and all of those departments. And so my hat's off, um, and I remind them of this every week, but my hat's off to all that they have done and are doing. And as we move into recovery and we're bringing um, staff back to prepare for our opening of City Hall and uh, some of our other facilities in the coming weeks, um, it's good to see faces that have been absent since March 13th. So it's, it's good to, um, smiles behind masks are still smiles. So um, it, it's great to have them back. Um, I would just like to say thank you to Councilmember Davis for your comments about the Lamar project, but it's hard to miss. It's kind of exciting to see that work progressing in the community and they are wasting no time, <laughs> you know, moving up the street and getting the curb uh, replaced. So look forward to uh, keeping that on track and, and getting that work done. I think it's going to be a great benefit for our community. I already mentioned we had our virtual neighborhood meeting, so um, I won't touch on that again. Uh, we are scheduled next week, just a reminder for our first budget work session. Um, I just wanted to take an opportunity tonight to sort of telegraph that we're going to be sort of slowing down and reframing our budget process. In uh, many of my conversations with other managers and administrators throughout the county, uh, people are really anxious to um, not move quickly in terms of revenue projections in the early phases of the budget until we start to get uh, some sales tax receipts that really reflect the impact of business closures and the, the whole COVID-19 situation. So we will have a budget work session next week, but I think on our calendar we were going to present our sort of entire general fund budget. Uh, our, our intent for next week will really be to talk more about revenue structures, just kind of a, a recap and a reminder of how our revenues are structured. And then we'll run through a couple of different scenarios that we're using and working through as a staff, as well as just making sure we have an opportunity to, to kind of capture any and all items that you want us to consider as we move through the rest of the process. Um, so I think, um, that, that will help us then we, we will get our first kind of March sales tax receipts uh, next week um, and then we will get the one that will be most telling which will be April receipts toward the end of June so we will still be on track to do everything but we're going to just sort of flip change up the order a little bit and we'll revise our um, budget calendar that's shared with the public so that they can track along and um, follow along with us if they would like to do that. Um, also, I would like to ask um, for some feedback or some discussion. We had talked about bringing back a specific reopening plan for council approval as it relates to particularly the uh, community center and our other parks and recreation facilities. Um, as you all know, the landscape is changing almost every day in terms of which phase of recovery we're in as a state. But um, Penn and his staff have been, you know, putting in extra hours, really looking at and, and thoughtfully putting that plan together. And we will have something that we can present for your consideration um, next week. And so wondered if you would entertain uh, calling a special meeting in advance of our budget work session so that you would have the opportunity to let, uh, let us walk you through that and potentially look for council approval of that. Um, and I don't know, so we are scheduled for our budget work session to begin at 6.30. I don't know everyone's availability. Um, I, wanna, I don't wanna rush us, so I don't, I don't think 30 minutes is probably enough, uh, but I don't know if a 5.30 timeframe is doable. That's probably challenging for a couple of folks. Um, or we could do it after. We could do the budget work session first and then um, hold the special meeting after. So interested in what your pleasure is and then we could certainly, if, if you are willing to consider that, we can prepare a special meeting notice and circulate that for signatures tomorrow. I am available. Okay, okay I think there was a lot of just gibberish just now. So one at a time, please. Mayor? Yes, Ken. Yes, I'm available at 5.30. Okay, Hillary? I'm available at 5.30. Trent? 
Yeah, I'm good at 5.30 as well. Solly? I'm also good at 5.30, but if it's a problem for people, could also do after. All right, does anybody have a problem with 5.30? Sounds like that's okay. I think 5.30 is good, and I really don't, the last meeting we had was, went into after 10 o'clock. I don't want the staff to have to do that if we can avoid that. Well, right. I think, we, yeah, I think we'll be much more focused um, than trying to cover all of our city aspects and operations. So I think we can, can do that. And I, I know that sometimes, um, I appreciate that. So we'll plan on 5.30, special meeting for us to consider the Parks and Recreation reopening plan. Um, and we won't have court ready, so we'll bring court back at, at a different time. But um, again, we had pushed in-person court dockets off until after the 1st of July. So uh, there's probably an opportunity to just incorporate that into a June uh, regular meeting without calling a special meeting. So thank you for that. The other thing that I would just mention is that we are working on uh, signage in general for our facilities uh, as uh, we work to reopen, um, but we're also working and have been in conversation with the um, newly revived Mission Business Partnership to develop some sort of generic signage that we could make available to any of our businesses who aren't already um, posting signage of their own or have access to signage of their own regarding uh, masks and the wearing of masks in their in their businesses. So giving them the option uh, again, just to either require or encourage or you know, whatever road they want to go down, um, kind of tweaking a final design. And then um, we also thought we've seen a lot of signage out and about already in the community that, that people are um, doing on their own. And so we thought the other thing we might look at, at promoting is a show us your signage or show us your, you know, show us your safety precautions and measures. Um, and I think also, uh, as the Mission Business Partnership maintains that missionbusiness.org website, that I think we can encourage uh, Kevin Fullerton and our businesses to certainly, as they reopen, um, you know, maybe share some information there as well um, for folks who might be looking about the, the safety precautions that they're taking. Hillary. Laura, I just had a quick question as you were talking about signs. Can I assume that we're going to lax some of our typical regulations surrounding signs as businesses might have, you know, a regular signs up saying now open or take out or care. I've seen lots around the city and I think that that's a great thing for them to be able to do and just want to make sure we're not, um, you know, writing them up or doing anything like that. <laughs> this is what we've been doing okay. cool. since <laughs> March 13th. And we will continue to do that. Uh, and that's all I have this evening, Mayor. Solly? Yeah, I was just gonna say, I really like the idea of a show us your signs or other me measures campaign. You know, I think that's a really good way to make it fun and also promote businesses that are, are being safe and need some publicity getting back open in our community. All right, um, that will conclude uh, item 12. Item 13 is executive session. We do not have a need for an executive session this evening. So then we would move to adjournment. But before we adjourn tonight, I want to share with the public that the video from this meeting will be available through a link on our website, missionks.org. Um, Emily? Yes, I just have a special request, if you don't mind, before we adjourn, if everyone okay. could pose for a Zoom picture so that I could use it in future promotions for our meetings. Smiles are nicer than looks down. So <laughs> if you wouldn't mind just um, letting me see your face and I'll get a picture. There's Kristen. Hi, Kristen. <laughs> Hi, RC. <laughs> All right, ready? Thank you. All right. I'm that's sorry. I was, I was supposed to ask that and I forgot. Okay. <laughs> right. There being no further business tonight, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Move. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.